Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we're going to take a closer look at the Core i7-7700K, the last of the quad-core hyper-threading enabled Core i7 processors. The 7th Gen Core series, codenamed KB Lake, was first released back in early 2017, and the flagship Core i7 model, the 7700K, commanded an asking price of $340 US, and that's the same price you'll pay today for a Ryzen 7 3800X. That means three and a half years ago, 3800X money bought you a four core eight thread processor. Or another way to look at it is that today you can get 7700K light performance with the Ryzen 3 3300X while spending almost three times less. So naturally the 7700K won't have aged particularly well even when compared to Intel's own range. But if you still own the Core i7 processor, just how much faster are the newer parts and what's gonna provide you with the most beneficial upgrade? I'm also keen to see how the 7700K compares to its primary competitor of the time, the Ryzen 7 1700, and for this content I've got overclocked results for both processors. So to see how the 7700K handles in 2020, the 7th gen processor has been tested on the ASRock Z270 Taichi motherboard, the 8th and 9th gen core processors were tested on the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Ultra, and the new 10th gen core processors on the ASUS ROG Maximus 12 Extreme. Then all Ryzen processors have been tested on the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master. Finally, all configurations feature a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200CL14 memory, and a Corsair Hydro Series H150i Pro 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, let's get into the results. As usual, I'll start by looking at the Cinebench R20 results. Here the 7700K is pretty underwhelming. When compared to the more recently released processors, it's slower than basically everything, and even when overclocked can only match the Ryzen 3 3300X, thanks to a 13% boost in performance. The 8-core R7 1700 though is in a completely different league for these core heavy workloads, and comparing the overclock configuration still sees the AMD processor win by an almost 50% margin. Of course, where Intel has excelled in the past is single core performance, and here the overclocked 7700K was almost 30% faster than the overclocked R7-1700. Also, because Intel's just tacked on some extra cores with their latest few releases, the 7700K really is essentially a 9900K or 10600K with a few less cores, and the single core results really do reflect that. Here's a look at 7-zip compression performance. Overclocked, the 7700K can't quite match the Ryzen 5 1600, so naturally the R7 1700 is well out of reach, and in fact, when comparing the OC results, the Ryzen 7 processor was seen to be almost 45% faster. Then if we compare the results with that of a modern processor, featuring a similar launch price, such as the 3700X, we find that the newer AMD processor is 86% faster. The margins grow quite a bit for the decompression test, and here the overclocked R7-1700 is 78% faster than the overclocked 7700K. Moreover, 2017's flagship Cry 7 part was slower than even the Ryzen 3 3300X. The Blender results are really just more of the same. Even overclocked to 4.9GHz, the 7700K can only match the Ryzen 5 1600 and narrowly edge out the 3300X, while stock it's sat between the 9600K and 9400F. Now, when it comes to code compilation work, the Core i7-7700K does fare a little bit better, but even so, we are still talking about a 42% performance advantage in favor of the first gen Ryzen processor when comparing the OC results, or 30% when stock. Moreover, you're looking at an insane 104% performance boost when upgrading from the 7700K to the 3700X. Not bad given the third gen Ryzen processor costs just $280 US right now. For the most part, the 7700K is still very capable when it comes to video production work, at least the editing portion of the production pipeline. You won't be applying loads of effects simultaneously, but for basic type editing, it does work well enough. Again, we're looking at Ryzen 5 1600 light performance in DaVinci Resolve Studio 16, once overclocked. Similar margins are also seen in Adobe Premiere Pro 2020, and here we see when comparing the OC results, the R7-1700 was almost 30% faster, so another solid result for the 8-core processor. The Adobe Photoshop 2020 results are a lot more mixed, and because this application doesn't really require or at least utilize core-heavy processors very well, the 7700K looks quite good. That said, while it is faster than the R7-1700, if we look at the overclocked results, we see that it only wins by a 5% margin. 
We find a similar story when testing with Adobe After Effects 2020, though this time the overclocked Ryzen 7 1700 processor is only able to match the stock 7700K. So this is a good example of an application that doesn't require, or at least utilize, more than a four core processor. And as a result, the 7700K is comparable to the more modern processors offering many more cores, but very little in the way of IPC improvements. Now here's a quick look at total system power consumption. Stock the 7700K and 1700 are very similar, though overclocked the Ryzen 7 processor pushes system usage roughly 20% higher. It is well worth noting that while the Core i7 and Ryzen 7 processors consume similar levels of power when stock, the 1700 was actually 42% faster in this test, so that is a significant advantage in terms of performance per watt. Now, for the gaming benchmarks, we'll start with Battlefield 5, and please note, we're using an RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p with the ultra quality preset. Here, the 7700K is still able to deliver respectable performance, though you will likely notice smoother, more consistent frame rates with something like the Core i5-10600K. Where the 7700K still shines is in games that don't require more than a quad-core processor. Here it's not a great deal slower than the 10600K, and once overclocked we're looking at Ryzen 7 3700X light performance. Moreover, in these less demanding titles, the 7700K is often a good bit faster than the Ryzen 7 1700. And another example of this is seen in Gears Tactics. Here the first gen Ryzen 7 processor really struggles. The memory and cache optimizations of second gen Ryzen, while not massive, do make a world of difference in this title. And then of course third gen Ryzen was a massive leap forward. Still, for the best performance, something like the Core i5-10600K is what you'll be after. Ghost Recon Breakpoint is a good example of a game that's not very CPU demanding, but it's also not very sensitive when it comes to CPU performance. Memory and cache latency, for example, don't play a big role here. As a result, the Core i7-7700K really isn't much faster than the Ryzen 7 1700. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is one of the best glimpses of future gaming performance that we have, and here we're seeing that while the 7700K still performs very well, the Ryzen 7 1700 offers better 1% low performance, enabling a slightly smoother gaming experience. And last up, we have Red Dead Redemption 2, and this is another demanding modern title. But again, the 7700K proves that four cores with eight threads is still enough to get the job done, but the Ryzen 7 7700 also proves that more cores can make up for a lack of clock speed if fully utilized. Finally, here's a look at our six game average. CPUs such as the Ryzen 7 7700 are certainly better leveraged today when compared to just a few years ago, but we're certainly not yet at a point where you consider the 7700K dead. In fact, quite the opposite given we saw highly playable performance in all the games tested. It's also worth noting that we're testing at 1080p with an RTX 2080 Ti, so under more realistic gaming conditions, the margins will be even smaller, and that also applies when comparing the 7700K to something like the 10600K for example. As dated as the Core i7-7700K looks when compared to processors such as the Core i5-10600K or Ryzen 7 3700X, especially when you consider that it sold for roughly the same price just three and a half years ago, but for those of you who are still using the Core i7 processor, it might not feel all that slow, depending on what you're doing of course. But for gaming it is still very capable, especially when overclocked up to around 5 GHz. Furthermore, depending on the games you play or the quality settings used, upgrading something like the 10600K, 10700K or really even the 10900K might not net you any additional performance. Chances are you'll be GPU limited, so the 7700K won't be a problem until parts like the Ryzen 7 1700 are becoming insufficient. Of course, if you use your PC for productivity tasks, particularly those that can utilize eight or more cores, then the upgrade from the 7700K to a modern eight core 16 thread processor, such as the 3700X, will be huge. For example, we saw over a 100% performance uplift for code compilation work. And the Ryzen 7 1700 has also proven very beneficial here and has aged rather well. It really is crazy to think that the Core i7 range went relatively unchanged for six years. Four core, eight threads with an eight megabyte L3 cache from the 2600K to the 7700K. And we also saw roughly the same asking price once adjusting for inflation. But in the three years since Ryzen showed up, that configuration went from flagship tier to Core i3 range. And now the 7700K basically is a Core i3-10100. Here's to hoping we see that kind of progress for at least the next three years. And that is going to do it for this one. Hope you enjoyed this look at the Core i7-7700K. If you did, 
You can also subscribe for more content like this. And if you'd like to support the work we do at Harambox, then consider checking out our Patreon account. We will be doing our Patreon exclusive live stream uh, next week. We'll also be doing Q and A's. Uh, there's behind the scenes videos, our exclusive Discord chat, a lot of cool stuff there. So if you're interested, check it out. Link is in the very description. But above all else, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.